From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with the Cube, coming to you from our Palo Alto studios with a Cube Conversation with a great influencer. We haven't had him on for a while. Last had him on uh, in May, I think of 2019, mid 2019. We're excited to welcome him back to the program. He's Kevin L. Jackson. He is the CEO of GC Global Net. Kevin, great to see you today. Hey, how you doing, Jeff? Thanks for having me. It's a, it's been a while, but it's been a uh, while. I really enjoy the cube. Yeah, I really enjoy being on the cube. Well, thank you for uh, for coming back. So we've got you on to talk about Citrix. We had you last on. Mm -hmm. We had you on at Citrix Synergy this year. Obviously, COVID hit. Uh, all the all the uh, events have gone virtual and digital. And Citrix made right. an interesting move. They decided to kind of break their thing into three buckets, kind of around the main topics that people are interested in in their world. And that's uh, cloud. So they had a Citrix Cloud Summit. They had a Citrix Workplace Summit. And now they just had their last one of the three, which is the Citrix Security Summit. Uh, just wrapped up. So before we jump into that, I just want to get your take. How you doing? How you getting through the kind of COVID madness from you know the light switch moment that we experienced <laughs> in March, April to you know, now we're like seven, eight months into this and it's not going to end anytime soon. Well, you know, it's, it was kind of different for me because um, I've been working from home and remotely f since, I guess, 2014. Being a consultant and with all my different clients, I was doing a lot more traveling. Um, but with respect to doing meetings and uh, being on collaborative uh, systems all day long, it's sort of like uh, old hat, and I say, welcome to my world. <laughs> but I find that, you know, society is really changing. The things that you thought were necessary in business, you know, being physically at meetings and shaking hands, that, that's all like, you know, oh, no, we don't do that anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I used to joke, right, when we started this year that we finally got to 2020, the year that we know everything, right, with the benefit of hindsight. Mm -hmm. But it turned out to be the year <laughs> that we actually find out that we don't know anything and everything that we thought we knew, in fact, is not necessarily what we thought. And um, we got thrown into this, we got thrown into this thing. And, you know, thankfully for you and for me, we're in, you know, we're in the tech space. We can, we can go right. to digital, we're not in the hotel business or the hospitality business or, you know, so many businesses that are still suffering uh, greatly, but we were able to make the move in IT and, and Citrix is a big piece of that in terms of enabling people to support remote work. They've always been in remote work, but this really changed the game a lot. And I think, as you said, before we turned on the cameras, accelerated, you know, this digital transformation way faster than anybody planned on. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. And another, one of the areas that was particularly um, accelerated, they sort of put the rockets on, is security, which I'm really happy about because of the rapid increase in the number of remote workers. I mean, historically, companies had most of their workforce in their own buildings, on, on their own property. And there was a small percentage that would remote work remotely, right? But it's completely flipped now. And it flipped in, within a period of a week or a week and a half. And many of these companies are really scrambling to make you know, their entire workforce be able to uh, communicate, collaborate, and just get access to information uh, remotely. Right, right. Well, David talked about it in the security keynote, you know, that, you know, as you said, when this light switch moment hit in mid-March, you mm -hmm. had to get everybody uh, secure and take care of your people and get them set up. But, you know, he talked a little bit about, you know, maybe there were some shortcuts taken. Um, and now that we've been into this thing in a, in a prolonged um, duration, and again, it's going to be going on for a while longer, uh, that there's really an opportunity to, to make sure that you put all the proper uh, systems in place and make sure that you're protecting people, you're protecting the assets and you're protecting, you know, the, the jewels of the company, which today are data, right? And data in all the systems that people are working with every single day. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They had to rapidly rethink all of, of the work models and uh, this uh, accelerated digital transformation and the adoption of cloud. And it was just this, this huge 
demand for remote work, but it was also important to uh, keep to think about the user experience, the employee experience. I mean, they were learning new things, learning new technologies, trying to figure out how to new, how to do new things. And at at the beginning of this uh, trend, this transition, people were thinking that, hey, you know. After a few months, we'll be okay. But now, and it's starting to sink in that this stuff is here to stay. So you have to understand that work is not a place. And I think actually David said that, right? It's really, you have to look at how the worker is delivering and contributing to the uh, mission of, of the organization, to the, the business model. And you have to be able to measure the workers' level of output and their accomplishment and be able to do this remotely. The back to office is is not going to happen in, in reality. So the employee experience through this digital environment, this digital workspace is critical. Yeah, I think one of the quotes he had, whether I think it was either this one or one of the prior ones, is like back to work is not back to normal. Right, we're not right, going to go back right. to the way that it was before. But it's interesting, you touched on employee experience and that's a big piece of the conversation, right? How do we mm -hmm. measure output versus, you know, just time punching the clock? How do we uh, give people that, that uh, experience that they've come to expect with the way they interact in technology in their personal lives? But there's an interesting, you know, kind of conflict, and I think you've talked about it before, between employee experience and security. Because those two, kind of inherently are going to be always in conflict because the employee's going to want more access to more things, easier to use, and yet you've got to keep security baked in throughout the stack, whether it's access to the systems, whether it's the individual, and, and so there's always this built-in kind of tension between those two objectives. Well, the tension is because of history. Security has always been sort of a, a second thought, an afterthought. Uh, you know, you said, do the work. Oh, security, oh, we'll, we'll catch up to it when we need to. But now, because of the importance of data and the inherently global connectivity that we have, the, the need for security has is paramount. So in order to attract that, in order to address that, the existing infrastructures had this where we just bolted security on to the existing infrastructures. Uh, this is when they went to the data centers. And we said, well, as long as it's in our data center, we can control it. But then we, with this COVID thing, we'll just burst out of any data center. We have to rely on cloud. So this, this concept of just bolting on security just doesn't work because you no longer own or control the security. Right. So you have to look at the entire platform and have a holistic security approach. And it has to go from being infrastructure centric to data centric, because that's the only way you're going to provide security to your data to those remote employees. Right, right. And there's a very a significant shift we hear all the time. We've got RSA uh, all the time mm -hmm. to talk about security. And that's this concept of zero trust. And, and the idea that rather than, as you said, kind of the old school, you put a, a wall and a moat around the things that you're trying to protect. <laughs> right. You kind of start from the perspective of, I don't trust anybody. I don't trust where they're coming from. I don't trust their device. I don't trust that they have access to those applications. And I don't trust that they have access to that data. And then you basically enable that uh, on a kind of a need to know basis across all those different factors at kind of the least the least amount that they need to get their job done. It's a really different kind of approach to thinking about security. Right, and but it's a standardized approach. I mean, before present time, you would customize security to the individual or to the organization or component of the organization because you know you knew where they were and you would you would say well they won't accept this so we'll do that so everything was sort of piecemeal now that work is not a location you have to be much more standardized much more focused 
um, and being able to track and secure that data requires things like digital rights management and, and secure browsers. And some of the work that Citrix has done with Google has really been amazing. They, they looked at it from a different point of view. They said, okay, where people are always working through the cloud in different locations from, from anywhere, but they all work through their browser. So, you know, we could, and I think this was something that the vice president uh, at Google uh, said, uh, Sunil Pati, I believe, uh, vice president of Google Cloud. They said, well, we can capitalize on that interface without affecting the experience. And he was talking about Chrome. So, so Citrix and, and Google have worked together to drive sort of an agentless experience in order to enhance security. Uh, so instead of making everything location specific or organizational specific, they set a standard and they support this intent driven security model. Yeah, it's interesting. Sunil's a really sharp guy. We've had him on theCUBE a ton of times. Uh, over the years. But there's another really interesting take on security and I want to get your, your feedback on it. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of this co-opetition, right? And Silicon Valley <laughs> is very famous for you know, co-opetition. Yep. You might be competing tooth and nail with the company across the street and at the same time you got an opportunity to partner, you might share APIs, you know, it's a really interesting thing. And one of the, the items that came out of the Citrix show was this new thing called the Workspace Security Alliance. Because what's interesting in security, that even if we're competitors, if you're suddenly getting a new type of threat or you're getting a new type of attack and there's a new you know, kind of profile, actually the right. industry likes to share that information to help other people in the security business. It's kind of, you know, us versus the bad guys, even if we're, you know, competing for purchase orders, we're competing, you know, kind of face to face. So they announced this security alliance, which is pretty interesting to basically bring in partners to support uh, co-opetition around the zero trust framework. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. This is happening across just about every industry though. You're going away from point-to-point uh, -point relationships to where you're operating and working within an ecosystem. And in security, just this week, it's been highlighted by the, uh, the trick, trick bot um, activity, this uh, persistent uh, malware that I guess this week is attacking um, healthcare uh, facilities. The actual, the US Department of Homeland Security put out an alert. Now, and this is a threat to the entire ecosystem. So everyone has to work together to protect everyone's data. And that improves, that, that is the way forward. And that's really the only way to be successful. So uh, we have to go from this point-to-point -point mindset to understanding that we're all in the same boat together. And uh, in this uh, alliance, the Workspace Security Alliance, is an indication that Citrix gets it, right? Everyone has workers, everyone's workers are remote, okay? And everyone has to protect their own data. So why don't we work together to do that? Yeah, that's great. That's interesting. I had not heard of that alert, but what we are hearing a lot of um, in, in, in a lot of the interviews that we're doing is kind of a resurfacing of kind of old techniques uh, that the mm -hmm. bad guys are using to, to, to try to get remote workers because they're not necessarily surrounded with as much security or have as much baked in in their home setup as they have in the office. And apparently, you know, ransomware is really on the rise and the sophistication of the ransomware folks is very high in that they try to go after your backup <laughs> and all, and, you know, yeah. all your, your replication stuff before they actually hit you up for the, uh, for the want for the money. So it's, it's there's, and absolutely, that's, rise go up. Yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry. 
I was just saying that's indicative of the shift that most of your workers are no longer in your facilities. They're now at home where companies never really put a lot of investment into protecting that channel, that data channel. They didn't think they needed to. Right, right. One of the other interesting things that came up uh, at the Citrix event was the mm -hmm. use of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning to basically have a dynamic environment where you're adjusting you know, kind of the access levels based on the behavior of the individual. So what apps are they accessing? What, you know, are they moving yeah. stuff around? Are they downloading stuff? And, and to actually kind of keep a monitor, if you will, to look for anomalies in behavior. So even if someone is trusted to do a particular type of thing, if suddenly they're you know, kind of out of band for a while, then you, know, you mm -hmm. can flag alerts to say, hey, what's going on? Is that this person, did their job change? Um, you know, why are they doing things that they don't normally do? Maybe there's a reason, maybe there isn't a reason, maybe it's not them. So, you know, I think there's so many great applications for applied machine learning and artificial intelligence, and these are the types of applications where you're going to see the huge benefits come from this type of technology. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Citrix Analytics for Security is really a um, security service, right? Um, that monitors the activities of, of people on the internet. And it, this machine learning gives you, or gives the service this insight. No one company can monitor the entire internet. And you can go anywhere on the internet. So by working together, leveraging this external service, you can actually have automated remediation of your users. You can put this specific user security risk score. So um, companies and organizations can be assured that they are within their risk tolerance. Right, right. And of course, the other thing, you've been in the business for a while that we're seeing, that we're just kind of on the cusp of, right, is 5G mm -hmm. and IoT. So a lot more connected devices, a lot more data, a lot more data moving at machine speed, which is really what 5G is all about. It's not necessarily for having a better phone call. Um, right. So we're just going to see, you know, kind of again, this, this growth in terms of attack surfaces, this growth in terms of the quantity of data, and a growth in terms of the, the, the rate of change that that data is coming in and, and, and the scale and the speed with the old, uh, you know, velocity and, and variety and volume right. of the old big data memes. So again, the other thing, go ahead. The other thing is not just data. When you have 5G, the virtual machines themselves are going to be traveling over this network. So it's a whole new paradigm. Yeah, yeah. So the, uh, once again, to have, you know, kind of a platform approach to make sure you're applying intelligence to keep an eye on all these things from a zero trust uh, uh, kind of baseline position, right. pretty damn important. Yeah, absolutely. With, with edge computing, the internet of things, this whole infrastructure-based data-centric approach where you can focus on how the individual is interacting with the network is important. And, and uh, another real important component of that is the um, software-defined wide area network because people work from everywhere and you have to monitor what they're doing. Right, right, yeah, it's really work from anywhere, not necessarily work from home anymore. Mm -hmm. I just want to, you know, again, you've been doing this for a while, get your feedback on, on the fact that, that this is so much of a human problem and so much of a human opportunity versus just pure technology. I think it's really easy to kind of get wrapped up in the technology, but I think you said before, digital transformation is a cultural issue. It's not a technology yeah. issue. And getting people to change the way they work and to change the way they work with each other and to change what they're measuring. Um, as, as you said, COVID kind of accelerated that whole thing, but this has always right. been a, more of a cultural challenge than a technology challenge. Yeah, the technology in a relative sense of view is kind of easy, right? But it's the expectations of humans, it's what they're used to, it's what they have been told in the past is the right thing, no longer is right. So you have to teach, you have to learn, you have to accept change, and not just change, but 
rapid change and accelerated change. And, and people just don't like change. They're uncomfortable in change. So another aspect of this culture is learning to be adaptable and to accept change because it's going to come whether you want it or not. <laughs> Faster than you think as well, for sure. <laughs> right. Well, that's great. So Kevin, I'll give you, I'll give you the final word as, as you think about how things have changed. And again, I think, mm -hmm. I think the significant thing is that we went from you know, kind of this uh, light switch moment where it was you know, an emergency and, and quick, get everything squared away. Right. But, now, but now we're in this, we're in kind of this new normal. It's going to be going for a while. We'll get back to some, some version of a hybrid uh, solution at some point, and you and I will be seeing each other at, at trade shows at some point in time in the, in the future. But it's not going to go back the way that it was, and people can't wait and hope that it goes back the way that it was, and, and really need to get behind this kind of hybrid, if you will, uh, work uh, environment and helping people, you know, be more productive with the tools they need. It's, it always gets back to giving the right people the right information at the right time to do what they need to do. Yes. Um, so just kind of get your perspective as we, you know, kind of get to the end of 2020. We're going to turn the page here rapidly uh, on 2021, and we're going to start 2021 in kind of the same place we are today. Well, to be honest, we've talked about a lot of these things, but the answer to all of them is agility. agility. Agility is the key to success. This is like not locking into a single cloud. You're going to have multiple clouds, not locking into a single application. You can have multiple applications, not assuming that you're always going to be working from home or working through a certain browser. You have to be agile to adapt to rapid change. And the organizations that recognize that and uh, teach their workers, teach their entire ecosystem to operate together in a rapidly changing world with agility will be successful. That's a great, that's a great way to leave it. I, I saw Beth Comstack, the former vice chair at GE, give a keynote mm -hmm. one time and one of her great lines was, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I think you nailed <laughs> right. it, right? This is about agility, it's about change. It's, we've seen it in DevOps where you embrace change, you don't try to avoid it. You know, you, you take that really at the top level and try to architect to be successful in that environment as opposed to sticking your head in the sand and, and praying it doesn't Absolutely. Come. All right, well, Kevin, so great to catch up. I'm, uh, I'm sorry it's been as long as <laughs> it's been, but hopefully it'll be uh, shorter uh, before the next time we get to see each other. Yeah, it's fine. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed it. Absolutely. All right, he's Kevin L. Jackson. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE from our Palo Alto studios. CUBE Conversation, we'll see you next time.